grand total of 50 tickets, and that's one of the best tanks in the game. This dude is awesome. I completely get why there was so much hype around him. Pair him with Gao, and it's just stupid in the best way. You'll see at the end. I'm, I wasn't expecting everything to happen that happened, but it was pretty nice. I was thinking about bringing Vivi here, but I had the full synergy squad, so... I had to run it. I mean, yeah. It was an easy clear because this team kind of just plays itself. So that was nice. Yes, let's get that Imperil on. I'm not sure, like, what the proper way is to set up Gladio. I kind of figured let's just get the covers on and then just go into the LD. And then from there, I think you can kind of just alternate between skills. Press the EX up. Wow. Wow. Press the EX up. Words! Press the EX whenever it's up. I swear, the second I start doing commentary, I just can't speak. I should edit this out, but I'm not going to. Anyways. Yeah. So it's like he's... He's like a Gallop and Zack mix. I'm going to do some bad comparisons, so get ready. He he reminds me of like a, a Gallop and Zack mixture, kind of. Because... Similar to Gallif, he jumps in front like this. Similar to Zack, he doesn't dodge, but he just takes the hit as a zero. And counters, which is, you know, what Gallif is known for. So yeah, Gallif and Gao is double counters with battery, which is amazing. You could put a lot of different people with them, and it would be good. Um, you know, just a really strong DPS, or... Maybe somebody with more attack auras, or more battery, or HP damage boosts like Shirlata or Kurosami. Like, there's a ton of options with these two. The two of them kind of just play themselves. So your third slot, I mean, could be more fight-dependent, I suppose. Mine had to be Kuja. I mean, it's just an obvious pick, given where we are right now. Now, this orb is interesting. It's the first one I've think we've got yes yeah, the first one we've gotten that single target and it doesn't like get rid of buffs or anything it just kind of hits you so there's a lot of options to get rid of this one i mean the orb condition is just bring a tank i mean that's what it's asking you to do just bring a tank because it doesn't go away like it'll, it'll count down and then go off and then it'll come back later at certain hp thresholds but there, yeah, there's nothing you can do to offset it. It's gonna just keep counting down. So just have your defensive strats ready, whatever it may be. I mean, obviously, Gladio just makes it so you don't have to worry. Warrior of Light would be awesome here, too. I don't know about Bosch because, uh, no, actually, no, Bosch probably wouldn't be. Don't quote me on this, but I would imagine Bosch might be awkward because these things cleanse when the orb goes off, which is fun. So there goes Bosch's target lock, and they automatically target whoever has the lowest HP. Which isn't going to be Bosch. The dude has a ton of HP. But that's why this is Gladio's event, because he can dive in front of whoever these things decide to target when the orb goes off, and just make it a zero and hit him back. I mean, Gladio cheeses this fight, and it seems as though he's going to cheese many other fights in the future. He like said like said like so i mix i just mixed together like so and like i said and i went like said it should be edited out it won't be seems as though uh most uh dystopians were treated very nicely by this banner i don't know of anyone who really had to go all out for his stuff. We all kind of just got it with relative ease. And I said, yeah, my polls were 50 tickets and there's people who got it in less than I did. That's awesome. I think this is the first time I've used a Noctis friend without a Noctis on the team. I'm sure zero turns is probably possible on this stage, but I don't know. I'm kind of not really into doing that at the moment. I'm kind of more into 
just mixing up different teams and seeing what works and just kind of having fun with that. I'm into a lot of the newer characters we've been getting. It's just, it's been more fun for me. But I had a plan here. Is I wanted to see Kuja's burst with Noctis doing follow-up attacks in Kuja's burst. To just maximize the damage output. I totally made a mistake here though. Which ended up being fine in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, see, I was hoping... Yeah, see, I did this totally wrong. It also doesn't help that their turn order is a mess. But I figure we have the Noxus Burst effect active, it's time. You see, I think I should have hit the other one. That would have been smarter. I forgot what order they were in. I took a guess and I was wrong. Because I think I just set Kuja up to be behind them in the turn order. Yes, I did. You see that? Yeah, that was a huge mistake. Targeting the one and not the other. I should have just broken both back. And then HP attack. That probably would have been a better decision. It really doesn't end up mattering. I just like to have uh, everybody taking as much advantage as they possibly can in the um, looping back and forth provided by Warp Stout. He still has two left of those after this burst, so these things are going to go down quick. They're kind of defenseless right now. Not bad. You see, Kuja's behind all of them. That's really not the best situation. And I have no choice but to LD right now and break them out of order. That's not actually true. I could, I could have maybe used the EX and then... I don't know. Like I said, it, it doesn't matter much at all. Because now the 15 boys will just do what they can. I wasn't planning that either. I really wasn't planning on a Noctis friend. I was going to just bring another Kuja. And then I thought about that burst effect thing. I'm like, you know what? I want to see that. So we'll do it that way. But I'm also liking... It's if the Noctis and Kuja bursts helped each other. Because, like we just saw, it, Noctis was jumping in four Kujas per sequence, and now Noctis is currently taking advantage of Kujas burst effect for a long time. So that he, Kuja is kind of hooking up the 15 boys a lot right now by just standing there with that burst effect up and that holy enchant up. So Gao is back. I was thinking about staying there, but no. I see this launch. Let's just go for damage. This was probably the most painless Lufini we got. For me anyway, because I had this full synergy squad. J just to clarify, if I'm going to say that this stage is easy, I'm talking about how it was for me. I'm not making an overall claim 
about what the difficulty of this stage is for you. I don't know you. I don't know what characters you have. I don't know what your experience is. I can only speak on my experience. And with my experience, given this team, this stage was easy. This right here is my favorite part of the whole fight. Just watch this play out. So he attacks. Counter. Countered again. But we're not done. Timed perfectly so when the orb goes off, we just keep hitting. I could have went harder with Gal in the beginning. I think I only used one landslide. One or two. How many does he, does he get? Three or four. I think he gets four. So I think I used two. I just got Gal. I don't even remember his skill counts or anything. Done. Ground pound. So I'm wondering if... Okay, I know I go back and forth. Should I upload a challenge quest? Because it's just going to be the same team on a weaker stage. Probably no point. Maybe I'll do it anyway. We'll see. But until then, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.